Brian, we're here on the Monday ahead of the Switzerland game. You've had a full week in camp. How much have you in, enjoyed it with the, the squad? Well, it's been um, very, very interesting, very enjoyable from my point of view. I didn't know any of the players personally, except for Jane McGrath, who spent some time, um, obviously, at St. Patrick's Athletic in the past. And uh, I met him a couple of times then. But other than that, it was completely new for me. Um, but the good news was that I knew a lot of the staff, uh, many of them who played and are successful in their age teams in the past, and some of them played in the senior international team. So it was nice to meet them all again, but uh, all the new people have also been very, very uh, welcoming to me, and it's been really, really nice, uh, very interesting to see the development of uh, the structures around the international team close up and the, the kind of the use of technology and how much that's been integrated into the preparations for the games um, I would say successfully in the case of the game against um, Belgium so far but it's been it's been really good. John has praised your input um, in the week leading up to the, the Belgian game how, how have you enjoyed working with the staff but also you know technical advisor what, what sort of input have you been able to have? Not very much, really. Um, <laughs> I think yeah, um, I was delighted that, that to be approached to take on the role. Um, I've known John obviously since he was a, a young lad playing the underage international teams and followed his career very closely. Was involved with a little bit of it along the way at times. Um, I've been a kind of a sounding board, I suppose, for John at times, yeah. giving him the odd little um, bits of information and, and the clues and. Um, maybe little bits of advice in relation to how we might go about using the other people, using the other staff members and go about making his own decisions around the tactics, the training, the coaching side of it and the selection of the squad which is absolutely crucial. So working with, with, with Glenn, uh, Glenn Whelan, Paddy McCarthy, uh, Stephen Rice, uh, all of whom played in the underage teams, as I said earlier in the past, has been interesting seeing their, their development as, as coaches. I saw them developing as players and watching the different career paths they had, but now seeing them up close as coaches has been very enjoyable. And um, I think that they've been a great addition to the, to the, international, to the international staff. And then, of course, many of the the, the team analysts have added another dimension to it. Jared Dawn, who I worked with previously in the in the FAI. Martin Doyle has been great, you know, doing some fabulous work on a consistent basis, helping out Stephen. So that's all been very enjoyable. Some new people, some people that I've known, maybe hadn't seen for a while, but uh, I've admired their development in football through the years as, as players particularly in, in Glenn's case, in John's case, and in Paddy's case. And now Paddy as a coach, watching him um, in, the, in the Premier League is, is very interesting. His work at, at Crystal Palace, Glenn making his way, getting experience, not too long finished now with the game. Of course, Stephen, who had a great career in the League of Ireland, has been getting experience both in England with Crystal Palace and now with the national team. So it's all been, been very good and uh, they've been they've been very nice to me and also they have kind of bounced ideas off me at, at times not sure that they always need to but they have anyway players wise obviously a nil 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 a nil nil draw against uh, belgium how did you view, view the game very very positive result a very positive result against one of the highest ranking teams in world football who for many years now have been um, one of the main things in european football didn't go as well for them at, at finals as maybe they hoped in recent years, but they still have an awful lot of high quality players. Um, I thought the game was very, very interesting. I felt that the, the detailed tactical work that was done on the training ground got a big reward in the game. I think there was a clear, a clear pattern to our play, both defensively in the defensive organisation and an approach to how we might make opportunities against Belgium. We got those opportunities, but unfortunately didn't take them. But overall, I thought it was a very good performance and a positive performance. And the fact that we kept a clean sheet and that Kivian wasn't too bothered with too many shots, I think shows the, 
the uh, extent of the work that was put in be before the game and by the players on the training ground and then delivering of the match. It's all right, you know, doing work on the training pitch and showing them videos and doing analysis and telling them what may happen in the game. But it's not a matter to implement it and come out with a decent result, which I, I thought it was. A little bit disappointing that we didn't manage to score a goal, but encouraging that we were d defensively so solid, had our spells where we d um, took control of the game, made a few clear-cut chances, and then we had to you know, hang in, I suppose, at, in, later in the game when they made substitutions, we made substitutions, they got a little bit on top of us. But we dug in with, and, and got there fairly comfortably to, to a nil-all draw, I felt, in the end. Switzerland tomorrow, another tough test, of course. John hasn't named the starting lineup, of course, that'll be tomorrow, but it seems like there's plenty of competition in the squad strength throughout almost the entire 27, as it currently stands. Well, the players have been very busy in the training, trying to make the biggest impression possible for John. Um, I think the performance of the players the other day makes the team selection quite difficult for them. The team played so well, it would be quite easy to go with the same starting eleven again. But I, I know that that's not going to be the case. I think the team would be the better of a little bit of freshening up here and there. It's always the case when you have two, two games close together at this high level and high tempo game that it's better to to make some changes, I think, in the team. Maybe not too many. Um, you're right about the players being very competitive in the training and trying to put themselves forward for selection. Um, but unfortunately, he can only pick 11. He managed to get some subs on the field the other day. And I, I, I think in the overall circumstances of it, I feel that John is right and not going the experimental road. I think he said that it wasn't about experimenting. He was given the two games and asked to try and achieve something from them in a the short space of time with regard to the selection of the squad, the preparation for the games. Only really three days of real training in the build up to the first game. And now we've, we've managed to have a day today, a day's training today, yesterday recovery. Much tougher task, I think, tomorrow mm. because we've only got that one day really to analyse what happened on, on Saturday, how did Switzerland go about their business against Denmark, and how do we go about um, putting on our best possible performance, both in the attacking sense and the defensive sense um, tomorrow. So it, it, it's quite an awkward one, Switzerland, very good players, as we know, lots of um, high profile players that we, we, we know from European Champions League, from uh, the Premier League and so on. Very, very well structured, organised team. Um, the manager would have played for Switzerland when I was actually, yeah. when we last played against Switzerland in my, in my time as manager. Um, and he was, he was a tough nut to crack in his defensive line with his brother playing further up the pitch. But he has them playing very, very well. They've qualified for the Euros, the likes of, you know, Shakiri. Zaka, some very, very good attacking players, uh, Okafor, yeah. they'd be a real threat to us and a great physical strength in the team as well with the likes of Eibesher and Freuler, um, Zakaria in the midfield, midfield, all players playing at a high level as I mentioned earlier and a lot of experience in defence too. So it'll be a, a, another very, very tough challenge but we hope we're ready by tomorrow night. We've not had the the preparation time you'd like to have, the gap yeah. between the matches is, is very tight, as I mentioned. But we, we hope that we put on a performance and give the crowd something to cheer about in the, in the stadium tomorrow night. And finally, you mentioned the stadium. You had a huge cheer when you put up on the big screen on Saturday. On a personal level, how much has it actually meant to be you know, back involved with the Irish national team? Um, it's, I suppose in some ways it's been quite emotional really, uh, going to the game, I didn't see myself in that situation that I was in on Saturday, going to the game on, on the team bus and going into the team entrance with the team, I didn't actually see that coming, uh, coming around in my, in my time in football again, um, so that part of it was quite emotional and being involved with, with, with the players and the staff. 
Um, but, you know, this is not about me. It's about trying to help out when asked in a period of Irish football that is, has been probably a little bit difficult lately, looking at, you know, non-qualification for tournaments. I've aired my frustrations over the last few years and working in the media on that. And now I was offered the opportunity to try and help out for just this brief period of time um, to give John and the staff a dig out and the association and whatever knowledge or experience I have, if it's a benefit to John and the lads, I'm more than, more than thankful to be given the opportunity to, to, to give that little bit of knowledge out to the lads. Um, but as I said earlier, I don't think they need an awful lot of help. They know the game. They're experienced in international football. John's 118 international caps and working with so many brilliant coaches over the years has given him a great base. You know, Glenn, 91 international caps. Uh, he's seen a lot of humps and bumps along the road, knows how the game needs to be played. And equally, Paddy has, um, has had a, a great career at different levels of the game. But obviously, he's, he's well advanced on the coaching road as well, working with uh, you know, fabulous manager that he worked with, Roy Hudson, for so long at Crystal Palace and the other coaches they've had there too. So, you know, with them and Stephen Rice, um, it, it's, it, I, I've been kind of learning from them as much as they've been picking up a few bits from me. I think I've been learning a lot from them. There's a whole new language, language around the game, around the coaching game, which I, I find very interesting. The phrases are different. The game hasn't changed that much, but some of the phrases used in relation to um, particular tactics in the game, the wording has changed. <laughs> that's, about, that's about <laughs> it. But it's not the, the game hasn't. It's still about working hard, trying to win the ball back in the best areas possible in the pitch, getting people forward, getting people in the box, getting numbers behind the ball when you haven't got the ball. Those basic principles of the game ha haven't changed and uh, I think all the staff have worked very hard to remind the players about those principles and their responsibilities in the game and it's been it's been very impressive and I just hope that we all get a reward for, for the game tomorrow in the game tomorrow and that the, the you know the, the crowd turns up again and gets behind the team and can see see some maybe development in the team and uh, some action too around the goal mounts which is what people go to the games for as well as well as hoping to see victories you like to see action around the goals i hope we're going to give them that tomorrow that's brilliant brian thank you very all much all right thanks here on thank you